Wally, have you heard? Pusheko could disappear off the supermarket shelves because of global warming. Not necessarily because of Brexit, no, but global warming. It's getting too flippin' hot. And the youngsters don't want to do that kind of work anymore. No. Well, unfortunately, rather popular as it might be, Pusheko is suffering from climate change. And there's been a study. Yeah, a study. Scientists um, think Cabernet Sauvignon could be next as well. Still the grapes, you see, and how they're actually, well, farmed. On the sides of mountains, what have you, and rock and what have you. Which has, well, it's become depleted. And, and over millions of years, the soil and what have you has been washed off the sides of these mountains, what have you. But it's because there's so much water involved, there's, um, it's become depleted of all nutrients and what have you. But with global warming... Where is these vines with the roots down really deep in the sides of these mountains for these, you know, where these vineyards are, Prosecco in Italy. And, uh, well, there ain't enough water for them either. It's too hot. So there has been a study that has, which is quite interesting, because it's not just going to affect Prosecco, it's going to affect um, other, you know, not just beverages, but foodstuffs in general, especially in Europe. It has been so hot. I know it's overcast today. We had quite a bit of rain last night, actually. But crikey. It seems to be one thing or the other. It's either really hot or really wet. It's not great for growing tomatoes, I'll tell you. You get blight. So Prosecco is the UK's favourite sparkling wine. <laughs> well, I'm not happy with just any old sparkling wine, me. It's just sparkling wine. <laughs> I'm no connoisseur, I'll tell you. No. Well, according to new research, climate change could potentially wipe it out. Now, mountainside vineyards where the uh, grapes that go into the bubbly beverage are produced are most at risk from soil degradation and uh, drought, say scientists. Now, I know that people say, well, it's just, you know, every summer it's hot. Oh, we've had this before with really extreme temperatures. Well, no, we're recording the highest temperatures ever. In the last week it was. And they reckon that the ground temperatures uh, here in the in Europe, uh, in Italy in fact, was it Spain? Italy or Spain was around 60 degrees ground temperatures. That's flipping hot. You've got to take your dogs for a walk, are you? And that, you know, not on the tarmac, you know, burnt paws that stick to the tarmac. It's not great. So anyway, this phenomenon also applies to other famous vintages, including Burgundy, Grand Cru, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, which is pretty much, I suppose it must be the, the most popular of all reds, isn't it? Sauvignon. I suppose Bordeaux is pretty uh, popular as well, mine, but I quite like a fit too myself. How about yourself? Leave it in the comments down below. Well, the study led by Dr. Paola uh, Taroli <laughs> of the University of Padova in, in Italy said that the uh, risk is not only losing an agricultural product, but seeing the landscape change negatively, impacting the local communities. Now, here I am in the limousine of France. There was no work here. There was no work here at all. In fact, the... Um, did you just do a poop? Did what just dog just do a poop? Oh, you, you pesky dog. Anyway. <laughs> I do apologise for that. It's not a public toilet, you know. Well... It was... It was it totally threw me, though, seeing that. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh... Here in France, where I'm in Liberson, it was a. There wasn't many youngsters here because they all moved away basically because it was much work. You know, they all went to the cities and you know where, where they where they got jobs. But since um, migration, what have you, more Brits, more Dutch, and you know and other nationalities coming in this area, bringing money in, what have you, and you end up getting shops, uh, supermarkets, what have you, and DIY stalls, and then services to back that all up. They all end up. Um, uh, well, providing work, so the youngsters don't leave. You know, it's good for local, well, lo the local economy. Now, this potentially is a bit of a risk because the youngsters these days don't want to do that kind of work because it's it's grueling work and it's it, on the sides of these mountains that is, we do these vineyards because it's very hands on. It's not the kind of thing that you can really di um, get machines to do. It's not on the side of the mountains, what are you going to use goats? <laughs> Robotic goats. Or something, I don't know, <laughs> you know. But, um, well, the soils 
on the mountains, called the Dr. Taroli, the soils on mountain vineyards are usually thin and eroded, and it's been over many years, millions of years, and erosion has carried the soils and water downhill. But the mountainous terrain um, is the key to creating these particular wines. They end up, uh, the grapes themselves are quite small, but the skins, there's a lot of skin to grape ratio, if you know what I mean, so they're quite strong. And you end up with um, a lot of flavour and what have you, and a lot of tannins in the grape. Probably goes to your head a lot quicker as well with all those tannins, I imagine. Yeah, make you a little bit drunk. Well, now, mountain, what, uh, mountain grapes, what have you, not mountain goats, mountain grapes, are renowned for uh, stronger flavours, what have you. According to a study, the hillside vineyards of Italy, Portugal and Spain are also the most difficult to maintain and affected by this. It's not just, obviously, Italy. Now, coming, uh, coining the expression, <laughs> heroic viticulture. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe someone can tell me. Leave it in the comments down below. Anyway, the farmers and scientists must work together to try and save some of the world's most celebrated wines, said this, uh, said the Italian team. Well, Dr. Taroli said that the great effort required to manage these areas reinforces the specific human environment connection. Now, there's people with hands need to be able to you know, work these vineyards. If the people with hands disappear, well, then the vineyards will just... Oh, they're just going to wreck and ruin, wouldn't they? <sighs> Don't ask Jake Reese more. You think there was some a magical machine to do this particular job? No. Not yet. Maybe in the future, but not yet. Well, he's saying that this is why they are recognised as cultural uniqueness of primary historical and social importance, where uh, traditional knowledge is still the determining uh, element. Now, Talk about traditional knowledge, like friends here. A lot of my French friends here, and that they use um, they use the moon, not physically. They got no, no. But like planting and what have you, they it's like a, an age-old um, knowledge that's been handed down over generations, and it gives them that unique ability to. Well, they did dance like bed night to I'd say growing and stuff. It's quite amazing. They always plant to the moon and what have you, Luna. So uh, yeah, it, it's um. It's quite fascinating to watch, right? And these are skills and knowledge that they've gained over um, generations. It's been handed down to them, you know. And they learn something new and they'll hand it down to their, their family. But unfortunately, their family isn't so interested in growing food anymore because it's so easy to go to the supermarkets and just buy it. Unfortunately, it's uh, becoming very expensive. And that's becoming trendy again to start growing your own food. Trendy and practical and a necessity. Now, we grow a lot of our own food here, you see, and I do because I kind of enjoy it anyway, but also uh, it, it does save money. And when you do canning and what have you, you can grow your food and keep it for much longer periods of time. You know, you do tomatoes and you jar up your tomatoes, you bottle them, and uh, they can last like uh, oh, three years at least, really. Just just tap tomatoes in a jar. It's great, you know. Got hundreds of them. Well, the study lists poor soil and less rain as the biggest threat to the industry. The soil's thin, you see, it's depleted because it's basically run off. It's a very thin, um, thin soil. You might get rocks poking out of it and stuff, you see. You see it when you go walking in E-Down and places like that. You know, you look at the soil inside the mountains, well, you, you'll, get, you know, you'll get grass areas, but you'll see the rocks coming out of it, you know. Um, well, Dr. Taroli said that the, the last half past century has been characterised by rural, a rural exodus. In other words, these youngsters are leaving. Yeah. For the amount of work they have to put in, the monetary reward is too small. You see, the cost of living crisis, is, this isn't just a cost, the cost of living has been going up for a very long time. And the cost of food, might have you, obviously, is, is, you know, nothing's cheap, is it? And then your bills and other stuff, you know, your taxes and stuff you've all got to pay. You, the idea you can survive on a, like a minimum wage is... It's for the birds these days, it really is. You need some support, or you need to move out and find somewhere that pays you more money in the city or something. Become a banker. Maybe get Andrew Bailey's job. That'd be good. Get rid of him, that's it. And maybe the Prime Minister as well. Oh my god, he aren't. The list is never ending. Well, the new generation is unwilling to continue working under these extreme conditions if economic benefits are, well, insignificant. That's what he's saying in this study. 
The growing popularity of Pacheco comes at a high cost with enormous amount of soil lost across steep hillsides. And this is the thing you see, you know, the more you work the land, remember vin yeah, vineyards, what have you, once they're planted, they're there for, yeah, for for three decades, you know, um, generally they have a cycle where they, they plant they, every year they'll plant new vines every year, plant new vines, and they'll replace the old vines. It's just you know plus more. And it's the same with um, orchards. Now, you know, even in the UK, apple orchards and what have you, which in fact they've actually been grubbing up oh, hectares and hectares of apple orchards in the UK and not replanting. So it's uh, yeah. So the apple orchards are well, it would be important more basically. Yeah, it's important everything. Why not? Uh, okay, well, demand has soared for this uh, Prosecco, this wine. It's fizzy wine, sparkling wine they call it, don't they? Yeah, sort of like fake champagne. <laughs> By more than a third in five years, the same it's grown. It's quite a lot, isn't it? It's got it's, it's a lot of bottles. It's quite a lot of bottles. I know my daughter, my eldest daughter's quite keen on Prosecco, which she used to be anyway. And uh, champagne's only grown around for 1% growth in the same period, so, yeah. A third against one percent. Well, that'll be funny. Champagne's flipping expensive. What's that, Woody? What? <laughs> what is that? What is it, Woody? What is it? You gotta get it. You gotta get it, Woody. <laughs> you done though? Can I carry on? <laughs> no. <laughs> What's that, Woody? Huh? What is that? There's nothing there. He's just he's barking at absolutely nothing. Well, weird sort of bark, more of a puff. Anyway. anyway, so um, pulling off the perfect pot, oh, pint could be, oh, there, sorry, da, 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 da. Uh, so no, that's pretty much it, really. I'm just taking this from an article, as an industry article, I'll leave the link in the description. But it's, um, I think it's deeply concerning because it's not just Prosecco, this is going to hit so many um, food related it's stuff that's grown. Yeah, so this heat wave and El Nino, with it. is El Nino? And uh, the oh crikey, and um, the Gulf Stream, which basically takes the warm air from uh, from the south, south east, up past uh, Europe into yeah, into the north. So it protects, keeps us warm in the in the winter and uh, a bit cooler, cools things down in the summer. That, that, that's yeah, that's almost that's depleting as well. So we're going to cook. <laughs> Lovely. We're going to cook in the summer and absolutely freeze in the in the winter because of global warming. And does anyone want to do anything about it? Nope. Most people can't be bothered. Just moan the people who throw well, orange confetti. I think yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not that keen on on the methods from you know uh, just stop oil. Well, I hundred percent agree with it with their cause. And I think they need to. They've got to try and bring people on board. And the way they're going about it, it's, I don't think it's going to happen. But something, they've got to do something. And besides, they're fighting for everybody. And just, it's, not, it's not just about them. No. You know, if you don't look after the planet, we're not going to look after ourselves. And we've seen the signs now, you know. Even Prosecco, for Christ's sake. Prosecco, how are you going to manage without your Prosecco? Huh? <laughs> Quite fine, probably. But anyway, it's time for us to go. We're going to go, Wally. Do you know, mate? Time to go? Okay. He probably wants to, you know, give it a walk. He's not on his nose. Anyway, if you want to support the channel, you can do it on uh, Patreon or buy us a coffee. And uh, you might even buy some doggy treats for Wally, Pandora, and Sebastian, maybe. And maybe the cat. Not doggy treats, be catty treats. Yeah, I don't like Wally. Yeah. And we've also got memberships as well. So if you want to become a member of the channel, and we will be putting some uh, specific content on for that. So. It's time for us to go, so I can say ta-ta, you know. So ta-ta, and have a lovely day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay? As an order. And it is. Ta-ta. <laughs>